on uh, michaels.com. So we'd love to see your, your work at the end. I don't know if you can see this. Um, so tag Brown Paper Bunny, Michael's Stores, Tombow USA, and if you can use the hashtags, uh, make it with Michael, Sharing Art Matters. We'd love to see what you create from today's class. Okay, so hopefully you all have the watercolor set. Um, if you don't have this set, I'll go through each of the, um, the supplies. So maybe you already have these at home as part of something else. Let's open it up and take a look. So in the set, you get a blending palette, which I'm going to show you how to use this, but it's great for all kinds of different techniques. You also get this super handy uh, mixing jewel brush pen color guide. So you can create a color wheel for reference. And you can also create your own color mixing chart, which I'm going to show you a little bit about as well. And let's see, we've got the mono twin, which has two different um, sized nibs and it's water resistant. So it's perfect for use with water mediums and, and dual brush pens over the top, things like that. You've got your, um, Tombow water brush, and this is the medium size. And to fill that up, you just unscrew it and fill it with water from the tap, and then screw it back together. And this is your paintbrush. We've got a 4H um, pencil, which works really well with watercolor. Uh, it doesn't um, smudge or, or you know, bleed when you add water over the top because it's nice and light and easy to erase as well. Speaking of which, we've got the mono plastic eraser, which is fantastic. And then the dual brush pens that we have are the purple one is 757. So if you don't have this actual kit, but you've already got dual brush pens, um, go and grab this one, 757. The blue is 526. The green is 249. The yellow is 993. And this is sort of a warm red, which is 885. And in the little booklet that's in the front of the kit, and get it out. There's also some really handy color mixing information um, and charts and, and descriptions in here. So I definitely recommend having a read of this and playing around with some of those um, different color mixing options. Okay, let's get started. Okay, need some of these out of the way. Um, in addition to the watercolor set, you're obviously also going to need some watercolor paper. Um, I like a nice thick paper that isn't going to warp when I use a lot of water. Um, this is a Strathmore watercolor paper. So when you're doing watercolor, um, the paper makes a huge difference. If you try to use regular like copy paper, for example, as soon as you add water, it's just going to buckle and you're not going to be able to blend it on the paper. So definitely make sure you're using a watercolor paper. Okay. So the first thing that we'll do is I just wanted to show you um, how to create this color mixing chart that comes in the set. So I've drawn my own on watercolor paper. And I've just drawn enough squares for each of the colors to be mixed together. Let's hold it up this way. So that lines up and the chart here tells you what to do. So you mix red with red and then in this square it's yellow with red, then green with red, blue with red and so on. And what it ends up looking like when you've mixed all the colors is this. So you can um, keep this as a reference and say okay I really liked yellow mixed with red. That's a really pretty color. I'm going to use that for my project. Or I really like the yellow mixed with blue. It makes a lighter kind of sap green. 
so you can keep this on hand. And the way to create it, just to show you, is what I did was, you know, just go in, add a little bit of color, and then get your water brush. Just give it a gentle squeeze to get the water flowing, and then just wet the ink and fill in that square. And just go through and repeat that for all the different colors. And once it dries, you'll you'll see which colors you like. Um, are there any questions about the color chart? I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques, but I, I don't want to move on if there's questions about um, creating your own color chart. So far, no questions about the color chart, but we can give people okay. a second just in case they want to send one. Remember, you guys, you can send questions to Tombo dash ask me questions. I think we're good, Jessica. All right, perfect. Sorry, I just can't close that on my screen. Okay. Um, to clean your brush, I always have a little piece of paper towel handy. Um, just gently squeeze it and rub it on the paper towel until it runs clear. And that's just how you get all of the color off of your brush really easily. Okay, so I encourage you in your own time to create a color chart and find color mixes that you really enjoy and then keep that as a reference. Okay. So I've got a couple of other things to show you um, and I wanted to make sure that they were dried so you could see how they look. This one here is a square of color and then I've dropped a little bit of water in which pushes the ink away and gives you this fun kind of watercolor bloom effect. Um, I, I really like that. I think it makes it look um, more like you're using watercolor and you can get some really cool effects by doing that. So to show you how to do that, let's use purple. You just draw some ink directly onto your watercolor paper and then use your water brush to wet the ink and blend it all together. And then once you've finished, Clean your brush and then just squeeze it until you get a little drop of water. And I don't know if you can see, but it's already pushing that ink away. And as it dries, you just get a really pretty effect. And um, this top one here is just showing two colors blended together. And we can do that too so you can get a feel for it. Um, color on a little bit of one color. I'm using the 757 for purple and then 526 for blue. A little bit of color on this side. And then use your water brush to wet each of them. You might want to clean in between if you don't, if you want to keep the colors on the sides. Um, really clean and then just start to wet the middle until they blend together. And then as that dries you'll be able to see all the different shades that you can get just within two different colors being mixed together. Okay so now you've seen how you can blend colors and and um, and use the dual brush pens and the water pen directly on the water watercolor paper. So I also want to show you how to use your blending palette. So what you do here is you just scribble a little bit of ink directly on the palette. I'm gonna put two colors down. Some people hate that squeaking sound, others really love it. <laughs> And then just gently squeeze your brush to get a little bit of water for each of those colors. Mix it up. And then you just pick up that color with your brush 
and paint it directly onto your watercolor paper. So using the blending palette, you can not only blend all different colors directly on here to create new shades, but it also gives you a more watered down effect. So you can choose to, um, well, think about your project ahead of time. If you want a really vibrant, colorful piece, then you might want to draw directly onto the paper and then wet the ink. But if you want a softer, more watery look, definitely use your blending palette and pick up the color and transfer it onto your paper. And something that I really like about traditional watercolors is that they never dry completely flat. There's always, you know, little variations in the pigment as it dries. And one way to kind of get that look using the dual brush pens is to actually drop some other color into the ink while it's still wet. And you can do that with the same color or a different color, but just gives you a really fun effect as it dries. And you can see it just kind of bleeds together and blends really nicely. Any questions about color mixing or using the blending palette before we get started on the wreath? I'm not seeing any specific questions on that. So I think you're good to keep going. Awesome. Um, and just to, to show you how to clean your blending palette, just take your paper towel and you can just wipe the ink clean while it's still wet. And if it dries on there, just use your water brush and re-wet it. That's something I really love about the dual brush pens is you can re-wet that ink and just blend it or wipe it or do whatever it is you're doing. Um, I didn't really talk too much about the dual brush pens, which I meant to. Uh, something that I love about them is how vibrant they are. The ink is really beautiful. It's, they're kind of, they're juicy, so they never feel dry. There's always so much ink that flows from them, which is beautiful. And they have a brush tip on one side. And then if you wanna do some fine details or some thin lettering, for example, they have a bullet tip on the other end. So you get two uses out of the same pen. And the fact that you can use them dry or blend them with water is really handy. So instead of carrying around you know, a watercolor set with all these wet, sticky pens um, after you've used them, you can just carry around these pens and a water brush no mess, no cleanup, and you can get a huge variety of colors just from these pens. Um, I mean, the, the Tombow Dual Brush pens come in 108 colors. Is that right, Brittany, I think? Um, 108. But 108, perfect. So there's a huge amount to choose from, um, but you can mix all of those colors together to get even more shades, which is super cool. Okay, let's get started started on our wreath. I'll try and put this somewhere in shot so you can see what we're working towards. So the first thing you're going to need to do is draw a circle using your uh, 4H pencil. And so I have this circle maker um, device but a really uh, useful way to get a nice circle if you don't feel comfortable drawing it by hand is just to get a bowl from the kitchen, tip it upside down and trace around it. That's what I used to do before I got the circle maker. But I'm going to just use this and trace a circle around. Okay, I know it's a bit hard to see the pencil. Um, but you've got this one here to look at if you need to. And then I'm just going to mark out where some of my leaves would be. So I start with the largest leaves and you're just gonna draw kind of a curved shape and back down the other side. You know, it's hard to see that. And have them all pointing in the same direction around the circle. Um, so you can have them on in the same space or 
what am I trying to say? You can have them join up together on the inside and the outside of the circle, or you can stagger them and have them at, at different intervals. So just go around with your pencil and draw a few leaves. They can be different sizes. They don't have to all be the same. Kind of nice if they, they don't all match 100%. Leaves in nature are always a little bit different. And it just gives it a nice, loose, kind of fun effect, I think. And you just keep drawing your circles. If you need to turn your paper, do that. Sorry, drawing your leaves around the circles. What did I say? Drawing your circles. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to draw and talk at the same time, so sorry about that. So again, let me know if I'm going too fast, um, but also keep in mind you can watch the replay if there's any details that you miss or anything that you just want to go over again. Okay. And once you've drawn all of your largest leaves, hopefully you can see some of those, then you can fill in some of these smaller spaces with little leaves and maybe add a few berries as well. So just quickly go in and do some of those. So fill in those spaces. Almost done. And you can draw these reeds as big or as small as you like. Um, you could even just trace around uh, the top of a glass if you want to do a little tiny one, or you could do a huge one. It's totally up to you. Um, if lettering is your thing, you could also letter a nice little quote or a word in the center, which is really nice. Um, if you did a smaller one, you could turn it into a card and send it to someone. There's a lot of, a lot of cool things you can do with leaves. Um, so I've drawn my little tiny leaves and next I'm just going to draw some circles to have some berries in a different color. Just draw a couple of circles around. Work your way around, drawing circles. Okay. So if you can see, I've got my circles, my little leaves, and my big leaves. And now we're going to start the watercolor process. Okay, um, you can do your wreath in any colors that you like. Um, this is where your, your color mixing chart comes in handy because you can get a feel for it. Um, you know, I really like this purple that's created with the blue and the red, but I also really like this one over here that's the purple and the blue. Um, and I might mix up a couple of different greens to include on the leaves too. So. Let's get started. The blending palette. I'm going to mix up some blue. Quite a lot there. And some of the purple. And use my water brush to blend that all together, put a few drops of ink down. And the more water you use, the lighter the color will be. So if you want it really saturated and vibrant, use less water. If you want it really soft and sort of flowy, then 
just drop a few more drops of water on there. And just wet all of the ink and blend it together. Just working it together. And you can see it looks quite dark on the blending palette, but once you transfer it to your paper um, and it dries, it'll be a little bit lighter. Okay, so I've mixed up my color. And you can always test it on a scrap of paper just to see how it looks. Yep, I like that quite a lot. So I'm going to start just transferring it over to my paper, giving my water brush a gentle squeeze to get that water flowing and start filling in the leaves. And while that ink is still wet, I'm going to pick up a bit more color and just drop it into a few places. And as it dries, that will blend and give me a little bit of sort of variation in the color of the leaves. And you can see what it looks like when it's dried in places like this. You know, I want it to be, I don't want it to be completely flat. I want there to be little bits of differences in the color makes it look more like watercolor and just has a nice sort of texture to it. So you can just drop in a little bit more if you like. Okay, and then just keep working your way around. You can alternate leaves, you can do them all one color. It's totally up to you. How's everybody going? Any questions? Um, any problems or anything so far? I think, I think we're good. I'm waiting to see if anybody asks anything that I can let you know about. Um, we had someone ask, uh, do you erase the pencil afterward? Yes, I, well, it depends on the look you're going for, but Another really great thing about the Tombow dual brush pens is that you can erase pencil from underneath most colors. So once it's totally, totally dry, and you definitely want to make sure that there's no wet ink left, you can just um, go in with your mono eraser and just erase the pencil lines. It's super easy. It comes off really well. So just coloring in those leaves. I can't wait to see what colors everybody chose. If you're doing similar colors to what I'm doing or if you picked totally different colors, it's always really fun to experiment. So you can see on some leaves, I'm leaving a little bit of white space. I just like to let a little bit of paper peek through in areas, but you don't have to do that up to you. Okay, and then drop a little bit more color. And you can see on this one here, I'm already getting a fun bloom effect um, or a cauliflower effect, some, sometimes called, where I added more ink and it's spreading out as it dries. Okay, so just keep working your way. Just transfer the ink from the blending palette onto the paper. Um, let me know too, or let Brittany know um, in the chat if there's just other questions you have about the watercolor kit or uh, dual brush pens in particular, um, you know, it takes a little while to add the paint. So I'm happy to answer questions as best I can while we're working. We had a couple people asking about mixing the colors directly on your paper. Um, do you wanna talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for this wreath, I'm, you know, I'm choosing to mix at least this uh, 
purpley color on the blending palette so I can mix a lot of colors together. But you could very easily um, just mix the colors directly on the paper. And I'll show you how to do that with maybe the green. Let's turn this around so I don't get my hand in the, the wet ink. Um, so you could just add a little bit of green, just drawing it straight onto the paper. And then I'm going to mix in a little bit of yellow as well. And when I'm mixing directly on the paper, I tend not to go all the way up to the edges of the line because I want to give myself room to mix it with the water brush and then spread the ink out um, and make it go all the way to the edge once I've kind of mixed it on the paper. So you can see it just blends together really nicely. And if you're using a good watercolor paper, you can do quite a bit of sort of scrubbing and blending and the paper shouldn't pill or, you know, break or anything. And then just drag that color using the brush right to the edges. If you want, you can add a little bit more water, just giving it a gentle squeeze, and mixing it all together. Jessica, can you give some tips if uh, somebody kind of went over their line, um, some different ways that you could um, adjust either your watercolor or how to fix mistakes after the fact? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I've, I've not gone, to I've not stayed totally within the lines. Um, so if you can see, I've gone out a little bit there and on these edges too. I don't mind that too much. If it's just a little bit, I tend to just make it look straight with the brush by painting a little bit more. But if you've got something um, like, let me just do an example. Say you got some ink on your hands, which actually I have already done. And then maybe I'll use a blue so you can see. And you got a little bit on your paper where you didn't mean to. There's a couple of different ways you can help um, minimize that. One is make sure your brush is pretty clean and then just squeeze a little bit of water onto it, mix that color and then quickly dab it with your paper towel and you can do that a couple of times and you can start to to lessen that spot and you can keep going until you really can't see that color anymore. Um, I'm using a lot of water, so I'm just gonna switch to a different brush that's full. So you can just keep wetting that area and then using a clean spot on your paper towel to soak it up. And you can see I've lifted off most of that color there. Um, another thing you can do, I don't know if I've got it here handy, but Tombow also makes a sand eraser, which is fantastic for using on ink. I know I've got it somewhere in my little supply cabinet here. Um, this is a, a sand eraser. So once this area is totally dry, you could just erase some of that ink. And it works really well on edges and sort of fine details where you just want to remove a little bit of that color. So that's another really good option for fixing mistakes. Um, but yeah, my first, my first way to do it is just to re-wet it because that's the great thing about the um, dual brush pens is that you can re-wet that ink. So you can move it around, add more colors, fix up mistakes, that kind of thing. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Going to color in a few more leaves. So I'm just giving my brush a little squeeze to get that ink flowing, or the water flowing and the ink off the brush. <clears throat> Any other questions so far? Not at the moment. Okay. Hey, just keep working your way around. Uh, 
Ah, someone was asking if you can explain why you're why you're leaving those white spots in the leaves. Um, it's totally just personal preference. There's no real reason for it. I just like to leave a little bit of the paper showing through, but there's no real reason for it. You don't need to do it if you don't like the way it looks. Um, something else that you can do too, once all of this is dry, is that you can go back with the jewel brush pens and add details um, without using water, which is fun too. So you could draw um, the lines on your leaves and the veins just using the jewel brush pens over the top. So I'll do one more leaf and then while we're giving it a second to dry, I can show you that. Okay, I'll clean off my brush. So this color is dry now and you could go back over the top and draw lines or other little detail using either the brush or the bullet tip. So that's a really fun thing to, to do as well, is to create your base layer um, using the watercolor effect. And then once it dries, go back in and draw additional layers and um, you could do shading or details or anything like that. Okay, how's everybody going? Hopefully it's still okay. I'm going to clean off my blending palette and start mixing up a green to do the rest of the leaves. So just wiping it with a paper towel to clean it off. And my paper towel is getting pretty saturated and full of color. So I'm just gonna get rid of this one. And I've got another one handy. Okay, so to mix up the green, I'm going to use mostly the green, which is 249. I want quite a lot of it. And then I'm going to add some yellow 993. And then just blend those two together. Squeeze it to get some water. And then squishing the two of them together to create a slightly different color. I think we might have somebody who got unmuted. Just a second. I think we may be good now. <laughs> okay. Um, because I've mixed up quite a different color to the leaf that we already colored in green, I'm just going to go back over the top with a little bit of extra color to make sure it sort of matches the other leaves we're going to paint. And again, I'm going to drop in a little bit extra color down the bottom. So as it dries, I get a really cool sort of blended effect. And just work your way around. How's everybody going? Am I going too quickly? Any questions? Just let Brittany know in the chat if there's anything that you didn't quite catch or Want me to explain something else. I am catching up. We have lots of questions today. Um, <laughs> it's been good though. Uh, lots of people seem to really enjoy the class so far. Um, let me see. 
Oh, so um, someone's asking if you if the um, the lines are dry, but you want to blend them some more. Um, how do you go about doing that? Oh, if they're already dry and you want to blend them, well, that's the the great thing about the jewel brush pen is because you can rewet the ink. I'll show you. Let me clean up this brush a little bit. So um, this blend that we did earlier is dry now, but I can squeeze my brush a little bit to get it the water flowing, and I can re-wet that ink and kind of blend it a little bit more, or you know make the the shape a little bit bigger. You can really you can just re-wet it, which is really handy. Like that. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, I'm still just doing the green leaves. And I'm going to put a little bit more yellow on part of my blending palette. So that way I can pick up some of that color and, and drop it into these wet leaves for a little bit of variety. And I'm running out of water in my jewel brush pen because I've been pretty water happy today. Um, so just bear with me while I refill it. So I'm just going to pick up some of that color and drop it into these leaves that are still wet. Just keep working your way around. It's nice to the um, the jewel brush pens tend to dry a little bit quicker than uh, traditional watercolor. So you don't have to wait for hours for your painting to dry before you can move on to the next part. So that's really good. Just drop in a little bit of the second color. Any other um, questions, Brittany, or anything else that I can chat about while we're working? Uh, a few people have asked about um, whether you need to use distilled water in the water brush, and the answer is you can use water straight from your tap. Um, that's not gonna matter. Um, let's see, just trying to see. Um, Oh, someone's asking if um, you plan on doing multiple layers of color on the leaves. You definitely can. Um, I might, may not do too many uh, layers just due to time um, for this class, but you absolutely can. Um, you can. I recommend waiting for it to be completely dry and then you could add a little bit more detail. I mean, you can see I did do two layers on this leaf here because I'd already painted it with one color. I wanted to give it a different color on top. So yeah, you can absolutely do different layers if you want to build up a little bit more texture and, and depth in whatever you're painting. And we had someone else who was asking about if they get ink on their clothes, will it wash out? And these are water-based markers, so um, they will wash out of uh, clothes, they'll wash off your hands. Um, you don't have to worry about it staining. Yeah, I can definitely uh, back Brittany up on that. I'm pretty messy and I've already got purple all over my fingers and, and um, all over the place. And, I often get jewel brush pen on my table and 
it wipes off really easily. I've actually found baby wipes do a fantastic job of cleaning it off. This kind of surface just comes right off, yeah, which is great. So yeah, I love that they're water-based. Jessica, maybe you could talk just a little bit about the difference between the water brush and the um, dual brush pen colorless blender. I've had a few people asking me um, how those are different. Ooh, um, that is a really good question. I don't use the colorless blender that much, so I'm not an expert on it, but from, and so correct me if I'm, I'm incorrect, uh, Brittany, but the colorless blender, I think, is just a colorless ink. So you can blend colors together really well, um, but I'm not sure that it would dilute the ink in the same way that water does. Um, would that be a, a fair statement? Yes, that's correct. So basically, if you're going to use the colorless blender to create kind of a, a blended watercolor-esque effect, then you would put color down onto the blending palette and you would pick it up with the colorless blender without any water. And the, um, the non-pigmented ink inside of the colorless blender would, um, would kind of act as your water, but it's not going to give you the same effect that uh, you get with the water. Um, it's, a, it's a much um, more dry kind of a look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that. I, I haven't used a colorless blender in a little while. Um, I'll finish these last three leaves and then I'll show you something else cool with the dual brush pens while we're waiting for it to dry a little bit. So just um, finish off the leaves that you're working on. Well, you guys can keep going, but um, I'll just do these last couple. While you're doing that, a few people are asking about the replay. So the replay of this class will be available on michaels.com slash classes. Uh, usually they're up about 24 hours or so after the class. So um, you should look for that early next week. Thank you, Brittany. Okay, I'm just dropping that second color in and cleaning my brush. So just um, for those of you who aren't aware, you can do some other really fun things with your blending palette and your dual brush pens. So I'll just clean this off and show you. So I'll use blue and purple. I'll show you. Purple first. So you can put down some color on your blending palette and then you can take a different color. So I put the purple down and I'm using the 526, the blue, and you can actually pick up some of that color straight on your brush. And then you can write or draw and it will color change as you go. So you can see I had the purple that I picked up and then as I drew it, it went to blue. So these brushes are kind of self-cleaning, if you will. Um, you can get different colors on them and then as you draw, they'll return back to their normal color. That's a really fun sort of effect you can get using the blending palette, which I really like. Um, you, can, you can also just draw directly. So I've got my blue here and my purple here, and you can just kind of draw straight on there and then do the same thing. So you get that kind of multi-color stroke, which is really cool. Anyway, just something fun I like to do with uh, my dual brush pens. Okay, clean up some of this. All right, so hopefully um, no one's too far behind, but if you are, as Brittany said, you can watch the replay and, and get anything you missed. Um, 
I want to do these berries now and I will do these as two layers. So for the base color, I'm going to use yellow, quite a lot of yellow, and just a little touch of my warm red, the 885. And blend those two together. A little bit of water. I want it quite watery and light, so I need a few more drops of water. And I'm just going to do little circles. And then once this dries, I'm going to go back over this ink with the yellow, just for a little bit of kind of shading to help these berries look more round and give a little bit of detail. So if, if your leaves aren't totally dry, just be careful where you put your hand. Um, I'm, I'm guilty of always uh, getting ink all over my hands and then accidentally dotting it around my, my page. But like we said before, uh, luckily it's uh, water-based ink. So if you do get ink where you didn't want it, you can re-wet it and kind of clean that up. Any questions or how's everybody going while we're working on these little berries? No questions at the moment, but I'm sure we'll get some in just a minute. I'm so excited to see everybody's reads. I, I can't wait to see what you come up with and, and the colors you chose. So I'm not sure if you can see this really, it's a bit small, but um, I'd love for you to tag me, Brown Paper Bunny, and tag Michael's stores and Tombow USA so we can see. Okay. Working my way around. You can really have a lot of fun with all the different colors that you can mix just from these um, five jewel brush pens. There's so many, so many different shades you can get of color, but then also depending on how much water you add you can get such a variety of light or dark shades as well. It's really fun to, to play around with. And I definitely encourage you all to mix colors and just really explore and, and see, you know, what speaks to you, what colors you like the best and what, you know, combinations. You can have a lot of fun with that. So Jessica, okay. we had a few people asking about um, the dual brush pens um, and how long they last and um, if they run out of ink. And I just wanted to let people know that um, they last a very, very long time. I'm sure you can yeah. attest to that. Um, you really don't have to worry about the, the dual brush pens running out of ink. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been a member of the Tombow design team for a couple of years now, and I still have my first Tombows, um, my, sorry, my first dual brush pens that I ever received. And I still use them all the time. They're, they haven't run out of ink and I'm, I'm a pretty heavy user of them. So um, they're in great condition still. And even though I use them on watercolor paper, which is a lot rougher, um, the brush nibs still look great. They just, they last forever. <laughs> they're really good. Um, although I will say, if you are using watercolor paper a lot because it is so rough, just be careful that you're you're always dragging your pen away from the brush. You never want to push towards it because that'll end up, you know, damaging the brush tip over time. Um, but yeah, as long as you're always dragging away from the tip, um, yeah, my mine are all still in really great condition. So I'm just waiting for some of this to dry. If we weren't on a live class, I might zap it with a hair dryer because I'm not very patient. Um, but I don't want to you know, blow out all your eardrums, so I won't do that. Um, any other questions while we're just giving this a minute? A lot of people or, have been asking about how you store the dual brush pens. So um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, 
I can't show you because my iPad is resting on my dual brush pen um, <laughs> storage case right now. <laughs> um, but they, you can, uh, they, you know, they often come in packs like the watercolor kit and you can just store them in the packs, of course. But um, you can also get a stand that stands up all of the colors and fits them all. Um, the dual brush pens can be stored horizontally or vertically and it's fine. The, the ink stays, you know, perfectly in both ends. Um, other markers, particularly alcohol markers, you need to store them horizontally, but the dual brush pens, they're, they're easy. You can, you can really store them however and in whichever orientation you like. Um, yeah, I just keep mine on my desk all the time and as long as the lids are on, they, they don't dry out. They're really easy to look after. Um, and like I said before, they're kind of self-cleaning. If you get some other color on there, you just keep drawing until it disappears. So um, they're very versatile like that. Any other questions? I don't think there's any others that, um... nope, I think we're good. Okay. Um, well, I've got a couple of my little berries that are dry, not all of them, but what I'm gonna do is use the yellow, the 993, and I'm just going to draw over the top, just along the bottom, I'm, I'm just putting like a little bit of kind of shading, I guess. That one wasn't very dry. So I know yellow is gonna be hard for you guys to see. Um, but like this one here that was dry, I just added a little bit more color around the outside edge there. And once all the rest are dry, I'll, I'll go around and do that too, just for a little bit more detail, a little bit of shading. Um, if you wanted to as well, you could go back with your, your greens or purples or blues and add some of those um, lines and veins to the leaves. If you wanted um, some more kind of illustrative darker outlines you can use your mono twin the um, the finer tip on the end is really great for doing line work if you really want those leaves to stand out a little bit more uh, but while we're waiting for the berries to dry just the last little thing to do is to draw the stem um, in between all the leaves around the circle and the way i'm going to do that is just using my green 249 and being careful not to get my hand in the wet ink, I'm just going to go around and draw over the top of that line in all of those spaces. And you don't even need to go all the way up to the lines or berries, just giving a little suggestion, I guess, of having a stem there that's holding everything together. And you can use the brush tip for this part or the bullet tip, it's totally up to you. Um, the bullet tip is really great for these fine details. Maybe I'll switch to these little lines and just fine details. I have a great question for you, Jessica, because mm -hmm. you used to live there. So um, Diane is asking, about recommendations for those who are in dry climates like Colorado to keep them from drying out. Yes, um, I live in Seattle now, but I lived in Col Colorado for years and years. Um, I actually never found that my dual brush pens dried out. I'm still using the same set that I had years ago um, in Colorado. So the only, only thing you need to do to keep them from drying out is make sure you put the lids on all the way. Um, I will say though that if you live in a drier climate, um, you're, while you're painting and using water, you'll notice that it dries so much faster. I'm in Seattle and it's a pretty humid kind of rainy day today. So that's why usually these leaves would be dry by now, but it's very humid here. So the weather plays a big part in how quickly your work dries for sure, but it shouldn't really affect your dual brush pens. Um, yeah, I, I never had any dry out on me in Colorado. So once you've drawn your little stem, you can just go in with your water brush 
and just lightly go over the top of that ink just to blend it a little bit and make it look more painterly. And that's really going to be the last step that we show today. So if you have any questions or you know any comments or anything, let Brittany know because I, I want to make sure I get all your questions answered before we finish for the day. So Jessica, do you have any suggestions or pointers for people to um, have really nice uh, crisp edges to their, their leaves and different pieces? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I don't have crisp edges on all of these. I kind of like a little bit of a messier feel. Um, but I guess I would recommend you know, like I said before, not putting the color all the way up to where you want it to be ultimately. So that you have a bit of space um, to just use your brush and like even out those edges. And let me just wet this and I'll show you. It helps too if you want really crisp edges to turn the paper away from the brush. So you're using the very, very tip to get that edge and just dragging it along, trying to do it in sort of one smooth motion and that'll give you a really crisp designed edge on that side versus if you try to do the line with um, the, the larger part of the brush you know it, it just you don't get a, a nice crisp line trying to do with the base of the brush if that if that makes sense hopefully that helps but yeah just trying to use the tip of the brush and in one motion will give you a crisper line Any other questions? I am going through them right now. Let's see. Uh, someone's asking about um, if you always have to use watercolor paper. My guess is going to be that that's how you're going to get the best results. <laughs> yeah, um, you can use multimedia paper too if it's um, like a fairly thick one and it'll stand up well to using water. But just definitely don't try to use marker or copy paper or anything thin like that because, you know, the water will just buckle your paper and you won't be able to blend either. You need a nice watercolor paper to be able to blend, um, particularly if you're doing it on the paper rather than on the blending palette. Um, the, yeah, look, paper makes such a big difference to the end result. Um, so that's a long way of long answered way of, of saying yes, you need watercolor paper. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we have one other person um, asking about the water brush pen being good for details. Um, and one thing, this is the medium water brush, mm -hmm. but we also have a small, which is great for um, for fine details. This is the small one. I don't know if you can see the tip, but it's really tiny and really fine. So um, it's, yeah, perfect for those little details. Um, but also the, the medium does go down to a quite a fine point. So if you're, you're gentle with it, you can get into those tiny little details with that as well. Um, and then there's also the, the larger one, which is a flat, a flat brush. So that's really handy for, um, well, particularly for lettering and things too, if you want that sort of flat stroke. All right, um, I'm finished with my wreath. Uh, let me know if there's any other last questions before we go, but otherwise um, share it to social and, and tag us. I can't wait to see what you guys did. Uh, this has been really fun and thank you for joining. This has been fun. So there were a few people who were asking about erasing the pencil marks. Um, all you want to do is just make sure that your piece is completely dry first, right? Yes, yes that's correct. Um, so I have a couple of leaves that are 100% dry and you can just go in with your eraser and erase right over the top and it'll actually take that pencil line away from even where I went over the edges, even where I went, um, you know, right outside the lines, it'll just take that line out from underneath the ink. It's a bit hard to see, but 
I just erased all those pencil lines for that leaf. So yeah, just wait till it's 100% dry and then just go back in and, and erase all the pencil lines that you don't want. Awesome. Well, so we would love to see what you guys created during the class. So if you have your video turned on, if you want to hold it up so that we can see your beautiful mm -hmm. artwork. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Oh. Hang on. I got to switch my view. I want to. I know. Switch your view. You want to see these. They're really good. Oh, oh they're guys. incredible. Oh, you guys, they look so good. Oh, I love all the different colors that people decided to use. Yeah, Ooh, there's one Ooh. that's like orange and yellow and beautiful. Oh, they're amazing. Oh, you guys, I'm so proud of you all. These are beautiful. This is great. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for teaching everyone how to use our watercolor set. You did a fantastic job. It was so much fun to watch. Um, thank you to everyone who joined the class and this was great. Yes, thank you so much, guys. See you next time.